Alrighty, so in the past couple of months I talked a lot about champion design and mechanics in League of Legends. Two videos I made in particular so far were on stealth and a target ability. Then there were the myriad of champion videos I made detailing my thoughts on how the game has been progressing over the years with its updates. One comment I usually see over and over again is to talk about mana-less or resourceless champions. Currently we have 25, so roughly 1 out of every 6 champions are mana-less. Even though Riot's initial philosophy on them was that they were balanced by having simple abilities or not as crazy impactful ones, citing Garen to lend credence to that. But with newer champions such as Set, Yone, and Viego, that statement is starting to lose its validity. And there's been a discussion on whether or not they're inherently bad design, because a core part of mastering League of Legends is to manage your cooldowns, mana, and whatever tools and items you have at your disposal so you don't carelessly squander them. Obviously, not having mana means you can spam all of your attacks as many times as you want with no consequence. So, I want to talk about three different things in this video. The second one, what are some inherent advantages that rise from not having mana? And the third one, are resourceless champions badly designed and or overpowered? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the first one. The first one, we're going to talk about today's sponsor, NordVPN. Gotcha, didn't I? So for those of you who don't know, VPNs or virtual private networks serve as a convenient way for you to maintain your digital privacy. You can completely mask your IP address through proxies to avoid things like DDoS attacks, tracking, and government surveillance. Also, if you're a fan of buying or downloading content such as movies and games that are blocked in your country, VPNs let you change your virtual location so you can circumvent those restrictions. Nord is an elder statesman of the VPN industry. They have over 5,500 servers in 59 different countries, access on all kinds of devices ranging from PC to Android, iOS, macOS, and even Linux for you comp sci geeks out there. It's backed by a lot of content creators. This is likely not the first time you've seen a Nord advertisement and it won't be the last. So if you don't have a VPN yet, head on over to nordvpn.com slash varsvpn using my code varsvpn to get a two year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. I actually have been using Nord since last year and when I decided to finally get a VPN for myself, so I'm really happy to be sponsored by it, but let's get back into the video. Manaless champions have been around since the game's inception. Tryndamere, I believe, was the first champion ever to not operate on mana out of the first 20. As time progressed, we would start seeing more and more champions released with the resource bar other than mana. Renekton and Rek'Sai, for instance, had Fury, and required players to accumulate it by attacking to then use an empowered ability. There's a subcategory of champions in the game that use a resource almost like mana called Energy, Lee Sin, Kennen, Akali, Zed, and Shen. Like mana, energy would be consumed through usage of abilities, but would regenerate quickly on its own, effectively allowing these five to never run out of abilities. The caveat is that while both maximum mana and mana regeneration can increase, energy cannot, at least not through items, meaning you could run the risk of your energy recharge not being able to keep up with how fast you use it. Aside from that, if the champion had an ability that required visual indication, that would sometimes replace the resource bar. Kled's resource bar is instead replaced with Courage, showing both him and his opponent how soon Skarl will be coming back. There's also Mordekaiser and Set, whose bar shows how much shielding they would receive from their W. Then there's just a bunch of other champions that straight up do not have any resource bar whatsoever. Riven, Viego, Katarina, Dr. Mundo, and Aatrox. As I mentioned at the start of the video, a big complaint towards mana-less champions is that they completely exclude a vital aspect of League of Legends, resource management. By having virtually an infinite amount of ability usage, it removes the concern for understanding a champion's endurance on the field, which is a big deal. Resource management is an integral component for, let's say, mages in the early game since you easily drain your mana pool without lost chapter and or tier of the goddess. Manaless champions can pretty much spam their attacks over and over again without consequence. Cooldowns are present, yes, but they exist on champions with mana too. Also, since there's no cost to use their abilities, acquiring cooldown reduction, which is now known as ability haste, augments their pressure far more. Even though it's in any champion's best interest to get their abilities' cooldowns as low as possible, those with mana or energy have to be aware that the more often they use them, the faster their resource runs out. So they either have to supplement that ability haste with more mana, such as buying Tear of the Goddess, or getting blue buff. Alternatively, they just have to find an equilibrium between being able to not run out of energy or mana in 10 seconds, but still be able to get the rotations up more quickly. For mana-less champions, they can essentially build all the ability haste they want. In fact, that's exactly what they did. 
champions like Riven, Aatrox, Vladimir, and Tryndamere typically hard rushed 40% CDR prior to Season 11 because that gave them a much bigger power spike than actual damage items. Also conveniently, it was super easy for them to get 40% through the help of runes and usually their first purchase would give 20% CDR. It's a direct increase in damage since their abilities have no cost. It's not just damage that goes up tremendously, but survivability and utility. Riven, for example, not only does damage more frequently, but she gets to stun you more often and, more importantly, shield more often. Her resilience exponentially goes up because early on she only gets a shield every 8-10 to 10 seconds, but towards the mid game she can get one every 3. Same with Vladimir, the faster he can use Q, the faster he gets the empowered Q, which does massive damage and heals for a massive amount. What's also concerning is that a huge number of them have built-in sustenance. Take a look at this list right here. The only champions in this list that don't have some form of health sustain or survivability such as shields are Akali, Nar, Katarina, Kennen, Shivana, and Zed. That means 19 out of the 25 mana list champions can effectively stay on the field forever or at least for an extremely long time. Part of mastering a champion is figuring out how much endurance they have, specifically in the early game. No matter how carefully you manage your mana, you eventually will run out without a blue buff or you will be low on health and will have to go back to base to fill up the tank. Manalist champions have almost limitless endurance because they not only never run out of resources, but they can usually heal. Renekton got nerfed several times over due to his lane sustain being too strong even among his peers. All he needed was one empowered Q on a minion wave and the enemy laner to basically recover half of his health. Aatrox was another. His E lifesteal used to work on minions too, but they had to remove that because he would heal to full HP just by wave clearing. Sustain does exist on champions, but it's naturally balanced out by mana. Ari does heal with her passive, but to use it she has to use her abilities, which expends mana. Eventually she won't be able to heal when she runs out. There are so many factors that you straight up don't have to worry about on a champion that has no resource, and players argue that that very privilege alone makes those champions overpowered. This brings us to the third point of the video. Are Manalus champions bad game design or overpowered? Back in the day, most Manalus champions had really simple kits. Trindamir, Dr. Mundo, Garen, Shivana, Old Katarina, things like that. Riot was more or less correct about their point of Manalus champions having very one-dimensional playstyles. Obviously, that statement doesn't hold water anymore these days when you look at Set, Yone, Yasuo, Viego, and Riven. These champions have access to just as many tools and incredibly decked out kits as champions with mana. I actually am on the side that believes there's nothing wrong with the concept of mana-less champions. In fact, that would actually be a bad thing if it didn't exist because that restricts champion design. There are some really neat mana-less champions and playstyles. Like all mechanics such as stealth and untargetability, there is no such thing as a mechanic being inherently bad design. It largely depends on how it's juxtapositioned with other mechanics. Simply because a champion doesn't need to worry about resource management doesn't mean they're in a class above those that do. However, the presence of a game element, or in this case lack thereof, needs to be executed in such a way that allows for fair and proper gameplay as there are a lot of serious implications to removing mana from a champion. As a game designer, when you add something into a game, you have to first answer the question, why? Why do I want to add a manaless champion to the game? Then, you have to consider how much of an impact that has on the experience. When you take away something, it has to be replaced with something of equal value, equivalent exchange. If your goal is to create a balanced game, you need to make sure everyone has the same power budget, kind of like Monopoly. Metaphorically, every champion has $2,000 to put whatever they want into their kit. Damage, dashes, and targetability, shields, heals, stealth, crowd control, range, what have you. Accessing certain properties requires a trade-off of some sort. Forgoing the need for mana must be made up somewhere else. That's also why all 25 mana list champions are melee or short ranged. It would be absolutely ridiculous if someone like Janna, Soraka, or Yumi had infinite mana, or an artillery mage like Zerath or Velkos to have infinite resources. You can't afford both. Some examples of good mana list champions that have that trade off from a conceptual standpoint are Rumble, Renekton, and Rengar. Before you start getting angry and freaking out about how overpowered Rumble is right now, just remember, conceptually. Rumble's abilities have no cost, what they do instead is generate heat. Overheating prevents him from using his abilities for a few seconds, but in exchange, it grants him bonus attack speed and percent health magic damage on hit. In a sense, Rumble still has to be careful about his abilities despite technically being able to use them as much as he wants. To further add on to that, his Q, W, and E are enhanced when cast above 50 heat. So to play Rumble effectively, you have to stay above 50 but under 100 heat most of the time and then you have to figure out when you do want to overheat to get that extra chunk of damage after you used all of your abilities. 
In this way, Riot did give Rumble free access to his abilities, but replaced resource management with heat management, thus being a well-implemented manalist champion. Renekton and Rengar operate almost the same way. Both of them can use their abilities as much as they want in theory, but when reaching a certain threshold of fury or ferocity, their next ability cast is empowered, doing more damage and having bonus effects. In other words, they require tactful execution of their abilities to use the correct one. Though technically with Renekton, he can generate enough fury to empower every single one of his abilities, but you get what I mean. If he accidentally uses his empowered Q on the wave, he has to build it back up again, which gives the enemy time to punish. Also, to compensate for both the lack of mana and the threshold power boost, Rumble, Renekton, and Rengar all have rather underwhelming basic abilities. Low damage and low function, relatively speaking, which places heavy emphasis on using those empowered abilities to make up the difference. These champions do not have mana, but still have something that needs to be controlled. This holds true for a bunch of other champions. Take Gnar for instance. He can spam his abilities as much as he wants, but every attack builds rage, which then transforms him into Mega Gnar for a period of time. While the goal is to get Mega Form as much as possible since that's the stronger one, you want to time it properly so you get the transformation right at the start of a fight. In this sense, Nar's lack of mana is perfectly justified since there's another mechanic that needs to be taken into consideration. Having mana would overcomplicate things and negatively impact his gameplay experience. Basically, just like stealth, just like untargetability, just like any mechanic in the game, there needs to be a purpose for it, and that purpose has to be put in context with other mechanics. You shouldn't just shove everything into a champion for the heck of it because that's what creates overloaded kits and leads to balanced nightmares like Akali, Irelia, and Samira who literally had to have things removed from their arsenal. It doesn't matter how weak their numbers are, the fact that they had all those mechanics was too much. Examples of bad champion designs that can do so many things while also not worrying about mana would be the two samurai brothers Yasuo and Yone and probably Viego and Riven. It's not the lack of mana that's a bad thing on them, but everything else in their kit on top of that. Remember, champions like Garen and Dr. Mundo are allowed to be manaless because they're one-dimensional champions, that's the trade-off. Renekton, Rengar, Rumble, and Gnar have to worry about their own personal mechanic that greatly influences the course of their performance. Yasuo, Yone, Viego, and Riven have no such mechanic. There's nothing in their kits that discourage them from face rolling all over the keyboard beyond what is expected from other champions. Now, you may say Yasuo and Yone have their third Q, so they can't just mash it. Okay, but Annie has her stun passive, she uses mana. Jax has his third basic attack, he uses mana. The empowered Q condition on those two are nothing like the empowered ability condition Rengar, Renekton, and Rumble have, not even close. Now, Yasuo does get some slack because his sweeping blade and last breath are conditional and can't just be used whenever and however many times. His brother, on the other hand, has no trade-off to using any of his abilities. In a bunch of videos, I talked about how overloaded Yone's kit is relative to how inconsequential they are when used carelessly. Viego and Riven are sort of the same. And before all the Riven mains rattle on in the comment section about animation cancelling or weaving auto attacks in to get the passive, those things do not punish the champion for spamming their abilities. In fact, they do the opposite, they make it more enticing to spam their abilities. Yet in spite of that, Riven has 4 dashes, a shield, an AoE stun, an AoE knockup, an attack damage steroid, and a very long range wide area finisher. If we compare the two groups of four that I just talked about, Nar, Renekton, Rengar, and Rumble versus Yasuo, Yonet, Riven, and Viego, which group draws more contempt from the player base? The latter, right? It doesn't matter which group has better performing champions at what time. Even if Yasuo, Yonet, Riven, and Viego were the weakest champions on earth, they would still draw far more resentment from the community than the first group because of how many things they can pull off on top of being manaless. Okay, so before anyone jumps to conclusions if they haven't yet already, I'm not saying that we need to give these champions mana, that will completely ruin their experience. What I am saying is that if Riot is going to create a champion that operates on no resource, it is essential, it is obligatory that they consider how that affects the rest of the champion's design going forward. You're more than welcome to release manaless champions, but if you do that, do not give them hybrid damage, 100% crit chance with only 2 items, 3 dashes, percent health damage, a shield, 2 AoE knockups, a cleanse, true damage, and attack speed based cooldown reduction. Quick disclaimer, I am not biased against Yone, but objectively he is one of the most overloaded champions in the entire game, and a very clear example of what you shouldn't do for a champion that can use their abilities infinitely. At least for Viego, the only ridiculous thing about him is his passive and ultimate. His Q, W, and E are honestly pretty tame. The concept of manaless champions has blessed us with a ton of really colorful characters, but it also brought to life a bunch of champions that elicit more frustration and anger than excitement and joy. 
I know in a lot of my videos I'm usually a fence sitter and even in this one I'm sort of half and half. But going forward, when Riot designs and maps out a new Mana List Champion, they have to think things through. Champions are no longer the same one-note fighters like back in the old days. Each new release or rework brings a dynamic, explosive, and interactive champion. This opens the door to a lot of potential masterpieces like Jin, but it can also lead to a lot of potential abominations like Akali. Anyway, the video is going kind of long so I'll end it off here. I know I sounded a lot more heated than I normally do, but being a game designer myself, it just really frustrates me to see these things happening. So I want to hear your stance on the matter. Do you think mana list champions are bad for the game? Do you think they're completely fine? Or do you have the same opinion as me? Again, we all have our personal experiences and biases towards certain champions, so for the sake of civil discussion, please try to look at things as subjectively as possible. If you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated, and don't forget to sub to the channel for more content like this. Consider following me on my socials and join my Discord server if you like. Also, if you have some extra time, why not take a look at my other videos? Shoutouts once again to NordVPN for sponsoring, I really appreciate it. And if you want to support me further, you can check the link out in the description. But thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Take care.